And speaking of loud and noisy, now I'm not talking about Peter Schiff here. I'm talking about the reaction to very often here among our panelists to what Peter Schiff says. He, of course, is the author of Crash Proof. Uh, Peter, you got a lot in your plate, oil and the dollar. Go ahead. Well, you know, let me put the two into perspective, because it's really not oil prices that are rising. It's the value of the dollar that's falling. You know, back in 1970, oil was about $3 a barrel, and gold was $35 an ounce. Uh, today, with oil at about $97 a barrel, gold around $830 an ounce, the relationship is still pretty much intact. So they was, track. Yeah, and so what's really happening is our money is losing value. And certainly, you know, when oil was $20 a barrel five or six years ago, my long-term forecast, my 10-year forecast, was $150 to $200 a barrel. That's in print. I've made it several times. And I still think that that's pretty accurate. I think we're going to go there, not because oil is getting more expensive, but because the U.S. dollar, which is hitting another all-time record low against uh, every currency today, continues to sink through the floor. Okay. Peter, 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 let me just mention two things. First of all, oil, as it, as it pertains to the average household is a lot less of an impact than it once was. And no, also, it's not. Also, well, hold on. Also, you know, you talk hmm. about the dollar, but how much are they paying for crude oil gasoline in Europe? If the euro is such a great currency and the dollar's not, aren't they paying at least twice as much as Americans? Yeah, but Charles, yeah, there's a lot of they, they are, but, Charles, me, but 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 it's still a bargain for them because compared to what we're paying, no, it's not a bargain. Let, 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 let him finish. Phil, Flynn, compared Phil. to what they've been paying for the last few months, I mean, listen, hey, listen, for for Europe with their their for because of oil's priced in dollars, for them oil's half price, even though it's more in in dollar value, for them it still seems cheap. Because they're used to paying outrageous prices. Let me over say there. two so quick for, things. For them, I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah, two I hate quick to say, but Peter but, actually is on to something here. It, it, it isn't just oil. It is the dollar. And the reason we're paying so, such a high price for oil is because the dollar has fallen so, so much. So in, it, th in this regard, I know it's unbelievable, but Peter and I actually agree on something. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, two, two quick points I want to make. Just First of all, you don't have to yeah. go to Europe. The, can, it's five years ago, the average American earned 70 percent more than the average Canadian. Today, the average Canadian earns as much as the average American. By next year, the average Canadian will earn 20 20 percent more than we I'll do. I'll look that up. And I, let just, me, I don't believe those well, numbers, go, though, right offhand, Peter. Go check. And up. also, let me tell let you. Me just, let me just I, I got uh, a very finalize point. the point. Hold on a second, Peter. You mean because of the fact that the Canadian dollar is now trading above the U.S. dollar. That it's puts their salaries eight. in a very different perspective. Of course. Well, that, but that's, what, that's how, how it works. That's why we're wealthier. That's why we were wealthier than so many people was because our money was more valuable. Okay. As our money loses value. But oil is just as important to our economy today, if not more so than I it was in the 1970s. Go. Let me, let me hold on, Peter. All right. Let Gary. me stop the Peter Schiff show for one second. Now, hold on, I'm here. You know, he didn't uh, interrupt look, Pat no, when Pat was agreeing with him. No, he didn't. Let me just say one thing, and, and Charles made a statement I'm not sure I agree with, that it doesn't really that matter that much that oil prices are where they are. I believe Americans are used to a certain price in oil. We used to pay $1.50, now it's $3 and going high. I do think it matters, and when you put the combination of what's happened with housing prices coming down, there is something out there called the wealth effect, and that wealth effect effect is going south right now, not north, and that will impact the consumer both psychologically and physically going forward if this continues. We, I, no, I, but Gary, I, I understand I, what you're saying, and yeah. we've been hearing this for a very, very long time, and you know, maybe it will happen, but I think that $3 threshold, we got that sticker shock already, and, and you know what? I think a lot of people are sort of used to it right now. Maybe the next tipping point is could be four bucks. Yeah, right? I don't Charles, think it's three dollars. You know, it it's happening time. right now. It it's takes happening a long right time to change something, though. No. It takes a long time but, for us to change our usage of gasoline. It takes a long time for us to change our usage of oil. People still buy SUVs. But, yeah, well, but, not not as much as they were. If you, and if you much. look, at, people are going out and they're drive, test driving a Prius. Maybe everybody's not buying it, but they're, they're starting there. Pat gets the last word. Thanks, gang. What we. Well, should the government play an even bigger role in inspecting the products that come into our country? Will they help or hamper free trade? Our Fox panel back now to discuss. Peter Schiff, I'll let you start with this one. Uh, the free trade issue is very crucial, but you've got a lot of parents in the States who say, give me toys that don't have lead paint on them. Can we have both? Well, sure. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't believe that that's the government's responsibility more than it is uh, the free market. But, you know, talk about biting the hand that feeds you here. I think the politicians are going to make some noise because it's good politics, but they're not going to do anything. Unfortunately, the free market is. As the dollar collapses, Americans are simply going to be too poor to buy all these impor imported products. We're going to get priced out of the market, and all these wealthier people who are seeing their purchasing power rise every day, they're going to be snapping up these products. You know, he talked about seafood. 
food, we import 90 percent of our seafood. Imagine how expensive uh, fresh fish or shellfish or lobsters are going to be in a couple of years. Americans simply are not going to be able to afford these items. Victoria Barrett, we welcome you to our, our daily show. Victoria Barrett from Forbes. I saw her pretty face in there. Where is Victoria? Victoria, I'm you there? Here. There you are. Good to see you. Uh, what <laughs> about Peter's here. point? I mean, it's hard for most Americans to imagine being priced out of products that you get for free at McDonald's from China. I mean, you know. And, and I don't think that's really going to happen. The fact is, China needs the U.S. economy to, 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 to make its products, to sell its products. They really have succeeded on the back of our consumers. And Look, we clearly have a problem with product safety. I'm frankly amazed that we haven't had more issues, given that we are getting 90 percent of our seafood and lots of other products from abroad. The issue here really is that the FDA has, has a very historically American focus, right? And the world has gone global. We're getting everything from abroad, and now they need to shift their focus. But my concern here is that prices will rise because the FDA will in make it impossible for companies to efficiently get products from abroad. But that's the danger here. But Charles Payne, don't you think, in in many ways, that if we have these offices already in place to protect the consumer, that somehow they have to get in there and figure it Absolutely. out? Absolutely. I, I mean, this one to me is a no-brainer. The fact of the matter is, is that because no one really has been minding the stores, why this has been happening. You know, I agree with Peter in that, you know, the sense that actually this will help free trade because we have greater confidence in the products that we're buying that are coming in. So I think this is wonderful. I can't even understand why there would be any opposition from anybody. If there's one thing you could agree on at Capitol Hill, how about making the products that we're importing safer for Americans? Well, if there's one thing you could expect on Capitol Hill, it's everybody blaming everybody else. Ms. Nord was on saying Congress didn't allocate the money. Then the Congresswoman was on saying that she was right. firing too many inspectors. So everybody's but at this point, let's get beyond the blame game and yeah. let's correct but Pat, the problem. The, the, what, the bottom line is that China itself right. doesn't want to live with all the danger. Right? They don't want to see their no. workers dropping dead of lead poison. No. So they're cleaning up their Th own act. Can debacle we help for them, them to, to do it a more, little more quickly? That's the question. Um, yeah, you know, th this has been an absolute debacle for China um, it, 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 because the problem is not government. The problem is the consumer going now and looking at a toy and seeing is it made in China because I don't know that I have confidence that that toy is safe for my child or picking up a bag of pet food and saying I don't know if I have confidence if that pet food has ingredients coming from from China. So uh, I think China and, and the United States are aligned on this. I think the key here is finding some balance between creating the, a, a reasonable system for product safety and it, without making the cost so onerous that you, you right. drive the price one, up inordinately. There's, there's and, one important point that, that was brought up that we got to address. China doesn't need the American consumer because the American consumer can't pay for the product. Peter, you're out of it's, your mind. Are no, you kidding me? What are you crazy. saying? Let you know, me that's finish. Why China, Look, that's why China pegged their currency to the no, U.S. dollar and, because they need the U.S. They don't, no, let they Peter don't, finish his point. I'm they, not sure it, I, look, I heard him. Go ahead, Peter. They, they no more need us than Wall Street needed subprime borrowers to lend all this money to. The problem is they can't pay it back. We don't have the, the productivity to pay back the Chinese for all the products they're sending us. Victoria? And yes, they, they have, no, they have a big inflation problem ahead, in China Victoria. right now because they're trying to prop up our currency, but they're going to give that up. Okay. I think Peter, over the hold next on one second. Go ahead, Victoria. We are their most valued customer. Don't think for a second that no, they don't not. need us. That's no, the, an no, absurd we're notion. Not. We're not. We're not their most valued customer. We're not paying. You know, once the, when the Chinese let their currency rise, I think over the next five to ten years, you can see the value of the Chinese currency go up four to five hundred percent against ours. And we when have that a happens, great relationship with China. But they we, need us, and we need them no, right now. Hold them. on, Peter. Let they her finish her point. Go ahead, Victoria. They need us, and we need them right now. They no. are making money off of the American consumer. No, they're not. Walmart is one of their you know, largest customers. Think about it. No. If Walmart were to go away tomorrow, the Chinese economy would take a huge no. hit. There's no, no doubt about no, that. No, they wouldn't. It's Look, you remember in the dot-coms? Remember all the vendor financing when Lucent and NorCal and Cisco were loaning all kinds of money to, to dot-coms to buy their equipment? When the dot-coms went broke, they had to write down all those sales. China is vendor financing okay. the United States. That we're, we're loading up, we're loading them up with bad debt. We can't pay. Okay. China is wasting their resources, and as soon as they figure that out, you know they're going to pull the plug on, on and the. And then sell their toys. To hey, to hey, last word here, Charles. And 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 when you bring this up, you talk about the free market. If those toys continue to be not depend, you know we can't depend right. on them whether they've got the lead. Isn't this the free market at work? And people start buying made in the USA toys. Absolutely, absolutely. Not only that, though, people who make toys in the U.S. can sell them overseas to all those rich.
rich people that Peter are talking about. So guess what? <laughs> it works both ways. It's a great thing. But we need to be able to believe in the safety of the products that we're, we're importing. All right. Thanks, gang. Has it finally happened? Are even well-qualified buyers struggling to get mortgages because of the subprime hysteria? Our Fox panel back again to talk about it. Peter Schiff, first to you. What do you think? Is it really infected everybody now? It's going to. First, let me just say something real quick. You know, you guys are giddy about the stock market. You know, the stock market, the Dow would have to giddy, be giddy, but we're not yes. sad about well, a plus let, stock market. Let me, it would have to be up 600 points today just to be even with the price of silver. The Dow is collapsing. And the against, price and, of gold would have to be $2,000 yeah, yeah, no, an ounce to be no, equal to the price I'm, it was back in 1980. I'm, I'm talking about today. I'm not talking about 1980. But let me get to the topic of self-prime. Because, you know, I saw this problem coming from a mile away. I told everybody who would listen. I screamed it on television that this was a problem. I helped my client short subprime mortgage before anybody on television was talking about these, these uh, triple B right minus tranches. We shorted them. This is not a subprime problem. This is much more pervasive. This is a mortgage problem. It's the entire mortgage market that's in trouble. And a lot of people are worried about the problems going from Wall Street to Main Street. They're already in Main Street. The reason that Wall Street is in trouble is because Main Street can't pay these loans back. Okay. And because people's houses aren't worth anywhere near what they think they were. If home prices were still as high as the government tells us, there wouldn't be a problem. Okay, let, the me, reason um, there's a, yeah? let me jump in and ask Gary Kaltbaum if he thinks that uh, at least we're seeing now if the home builders are, are showing some 20% uh, down for Hovnanian, does this mean that the shaking out is soon to be over or is there much more ahead? Uh, I think there's much more ahead. Look, uh, the lenders have gone from one idiotic extreme to the other idiotic extreme. They were dropping money out of helicopters onto people, giving a quarter million buck loans to people that don't even work or have any net worth. Now they refuse to give money to people that have a ton of money, and that's what's doubly hurt in the market. By the way, Hobnanian down 20. You should see what other companies are doing. I'm seeing 40s and 50s. I don't believe we're even close to a shakeout. In my studies of bear markets and housing, it does not take two years, and due to the fact that we had the biggest extreme speculation ever, I think this has got a few more years yeah. to go. I agree, and it doesn't matter, you know, about how, how credit quality or how, how good a borrower is. The houses are overpriced. Why anybody would lend anybody money to buy a house at today's market because the housing All right, prices guys, are we're not going to allow you to step on the toes of the ladies who've been waiting by patiently <laughs> to talk. Victoria, are you as gloom and doom as these guys? Uh, not as gloom and doom. I don't know what more gloom and doom would sound like, frankly. But here's what I think matters. What matters is the holiday season. This is the true test of the American consumer. And has the housing market spilled over? What everyone is wondering is, do people feel less wealthy because their houses are worth less? And will that show up at Walmart, at Target, at Williams-Sonoma this Christmas? That'll, that'll have nothing to do with the housing market whatsoever. The problem with housing now, Wages we've got are the, holding up. We got the most massive inventory build in the history of time in housing, and it's continuing to get worse, combined with restrictive lending. And by the way, for me, doom and gloom, I just deal with facts and well, what's yeah. in front of me. Okay, if things Pat, were better, I'd be glad to Gary tell you that. Gary and Peter are realistic. Right. I mean, think about well, it. You know, We've had a situation with these homes that is, is now pretty serious. Right. You know, you're, you're in a corrective phase for real estate, and the subprime lending problem is, is, is exacerbates every, everything. Um, I, I think that they... If you look at the price of housing in many areas of the country, they doubled in five and six years. So if there's a correction today and your house is not worth what its all-time high was, well, you might think the same of your stock portfolio at varying, varying times. Uh, your house is not just your investment. Your house is where you live. So you have to, it, it really serves two purposes. And Victoria has it absolutely right. Housing is linked to the Christmas season. She's absolutely correct in that regard. Many, but not all Americans, but many Americans do use their house as a piggy bank. And to the extent that they need to dip into their house for, for the purchase of the next car or the purchase of a college tuition bill, um, there, there's going to be some trouble here. Well, yeah, Victoria, Pat, Victoria, just... Victoria, you know, the markets do climb these walls of worry, and it seems it's like true. it's doing so exactly that today. 
Yeah, what's hard to tell is if, if it's really a wall of worry and that deserves to be climbed. The market has done remarkably well, even amidst high, high oil prices, dropping home prices. No, it hasn't. But, but what's important is that, you know, wages have stayed constant. We've got remarkably low unemployment, and we've got economic growth for now. Peter, the economy uh, uh, Peter, is Peter, I'm looking, I'm looking at Hovnanian, just to pull this name up. It's down about 2 percent, about 2 and a third percent. And I know exactly what he's going to say, but I just want to see his reaction. <laughs> Would you pick up any of these names as they appear to be getting cheaper? They're not. Look, they, they, you know what? They're going to, most of them are going to go to zero. They're going to go bankrupt. These companies are in serious trouble. Uh, there's no reason to buy them. Home building, no one's going to build any homes in this country for at least a generation. We've got too many homes. That's one problem that we don't have. No one's going to be homeless. We've got all sorts of homes. The problem is people aren't going to be able to afford to repair them. They're not going to be able to afford to heat them. They're not going to be able to afford uh, to, to fill up their refrigerators with food. These are huge, huge problems that we're having. Uh, you know, we've got a glut of houses. But, you know, the problem is we've had, we had that big run-up in home prices. Americans still don't understand that all those gains are gone. In their minds, they still think their house is worth twice what it was five, six years ago. It's not. In many cases, it's worth less. If you actually tried to sell it, you would get less than you paid five, six years ago. But people have all kinds of mortgage debt that they've piled onto these homes. Your home equity goes away, but your okay. mortgage debt is still there. Peter, we're up against a heartbreak. We thank the panel. Okay. Triple digits right there. You see it. The Dow Jones is up 105 points. This on a day when oil was up to a new time high of $96.67. Gold was up. The dollar was down. But look at those triple digits. And NASDAQ's doing well Only also. Only six Dow components are down. Of course, Citigroup once again suffering today, but way off its earlier lows. And, you know, you see the, the market continue to move higher on, on certain days where oil's high and gold is high, which would be disconcerting signals. But what about recession? Uh, sometimes a lot of people talk about it. Greenspan mentioned it a couple of months ago and then stopped talking about it. Are we in or near a recession? I had a chance to speak with the former Treasury Secretary, Paul O'Neill. He had some thoughts on that. Listen in. I don't think we're in a recession now. I think there's still quite a bit of underlying strength in our economy. You know, our, our, but you know, our financial markets hate uncertainty. And what's going on right now is people not being very sure about where the bottom is. I think if the major financial institutions, i.e., the banks and people who are caught up in subprimes, could draw a hard line and say this is all of it. I think the markets would be reassured and we'd go forward from there. He says nothing's a calamity right now, David. And a lot of smart people who've been in a position of business and economic power in the government are saying the same thing. And that would be Paul O'Neill, who ran the Aluminum Company of America, which at a time was a Dow component. It's a Dow component. And, you know, you, you look at that and you say he ran both the pr public and the private side. And uh, he should know. So let's find out what our panel thinks. And they are back with us again. Peter, I know you're, you're much more worried than Paul O'Neill is right now. What do you think about what he said? Well, he's, he's just wrong. We're in a recession right now. You know, the, the government reported the GDP last week. They said our economy grew 3.9 percent. But to make that, the government assumed annualized inflation was running at eight-tenths of one percent. Now, there's no way that's true. Uh, if the government was accurately reporting inflation, we, they, we would know we're in a recession. You, you guys have to start looking at real numbers. You're talking about the Dow up about 100 points today. If you price it in Canadian dollars, it's down almost 100 points. You know, we just did that segment about wages. The problem with American workers is that the value of their wages is diminishing every day. You know, yeah. Liz, uh, Gazelle. Okay, hold Gazelle, on a second, no, Peter. Hold on a second, Peter. Ch are you going to challenge that well, remark? Well, first of all, I'm well, going to value, hold on, I'm Peter, gonna value you've the Dow in dollars, and then I'm going to take my dollars and buy stuff in America with those dollars. And you know what? I'm going to get the same value for them. You know, it's, it, the Dow's up. I, and I really think it's unfortunate to really dissuade people from being involved in the stock market. Every time you say this, Peter, it seems like the Dow's up a meaningless 100 points. But but, Charles, you know, to get back to your point, you know, Charles, I, my GDP, clients are making three and four times okay, as much I know you money said that. You I'm said not that swaying anybody let's, from doing anything. Let's, let's, let's go back to the fact, though. Is this a recession or not? I don't think it's a recession. OK, and to be quite frank with you guys, I think a recession these days really is, the, you know, will come as the fault of the Fed. If the Fed mishandles monetary policy, that's what I'm if more concerned about right now. They've already than, done that. Then, you know, a consumer led re uh, recession. Pat, recession or not? 
I don't think it's likely. I think we're in a slowing economy. I think that's very clear. We're in the fifth year of an economic recovery. It's normal for it to slow, and I think you can get uh, into this very pessimistic role and say it's going to end up in a recession. It could, but I think the probability is fairly remote. By the way, specifics as to what a recession is, there is a group that decides what a recession is. The major component of a recession are two quarters of down of negative GDP growth, Gary Kalbaum. There are yes. some other things as well, but that's the basis of it. Are we anywhere close to that? Look, the best opinion of whether we're in a recession or going in a recession is the stock market itself. There is no way this market has uh, snuffed out anything that looks like a recession. And Peter can talk, the numbers are wrong all he wants. The stock market has never missed a recession in history. Okay. And we're up for the year and we're close to the old highs. All right. Ain't Peter, seen it yet. Peter, 20 seconds, final thought. 20 look, seconds. <laughs> look, Gazelle may not be as pretty as you are, Liz, Giselle. but she was a little smarter. <laughs> Thank you. She negotiated negotiated her contract in euros. You should have done the same thing with your contract with Fox. Oh, geez. She's and, denied that to Fox, by the way, about oh, well, wanting to be paid in euros. Well, versus... well, well, if she was smart, she was. I mean, and pretty soon everybody's <laughs> going to want to get paid. Okay. These numbers are meaningless. Uh, you know, the, you, people have to understand what's happening to the value of their money. This All is right. a disaster for All Americans. Right. The market is going down. The economy is going and down. And that's people need to get their money out of the country. 20 seconds and 20 seconds more, Peter. Thank you very much. You did say a nice thing about Liz, though. We appreciate that. <laughs> we'll take that. The closing bell just minutes away. Stay tuned.